And this is my encouragement for all of you guys. Think about where you guys started to where you are today. But God, have you ever had an idea of what you wanted to be? And it didn't happen right then and there, or it might not happen completely. But then you reflect back like, wow, I'm glad that didn't happen. But God. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Ignite the World podcast. This is episode number 35, But God. I am your host, Jamie Dottie Garza. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't, consider subscribing. It's Ignite the World. Ignite the World. But God. That's what we're going to talk about today. But God, because sometimes people ask, hey, how you doing? Hey, what you up to? And sometimes I just got to say, but God, something, only a two letter word, but so powerful. This two letter word has almost in my eyes culminated this whole month of August. It might be the whole season. I had this discussion with my wife literally this last week. But God, and I want to elaborate on this because I created this platform to share my testimony as it goes. Not only oftentimes we hear testimonials of where we were bad and only highlight the bad, but I want to highlight the good as well because they both live in the same in the same pockets. And I want to share but God and what that means to me, because we all, first of all, have you ever had them thoughts where you can't, you, you, you vision what you can and you have an idea of what the month will be. But then these monumental avalanche of blessings come out of nowhere, it seems like. And all you have to do at that moment is like, wow, I didn't even vision this, but God. See, that happened in August for me personally. First of the month came around, I had an idea, I was striving hard not to let fear and doubt creep into my mind that's why i've been so immersed into the word of god in the bible because the scripture is all there it's literally the blueprint for our life now and that's one of the main things that happens with all the disciples in there fear doubt anxiety so i've been really immersed in practicing that and i feel like god has really been testing me for a good reason He's been pruning me, not punishing me. Shout out to T.D. Jakes also. That's a great book, Crushing. If you guys haven't read it, I'm like almost done with it, completed. I got so many great life lessons from there. Back to the story, though. And it was one of them months. I was very, I could have let fear and doubt. They did creep in my mind. I'm not going to hold you. However, I kept the faith ignited. And those avalanche blessings came middle of the month. Boom, who could have even imagined this? Those avalanche blessings came at the very end of the month. It was like floodgate. It was like hotcakes, like boom, 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 boom. All these opportunities knocking, all these being in high demand, I had no clue. Long story short, I'm not going to go into the details. Y'all can wait for my book when I write that, but all I'm going to say is, but God. And that's my testimony and word for you guys this wonderful Monday as we kick off and start the new month of September, going in strong almost at the end of 2023. I do realize it's hard out here. I do realize it can be difficult. I do realize we are all trying to do the best we can as humans, as parents, as leaders, as people of our community, as people in general, trying to get it right. I'm still trying to get it right. But God, we got to think about and this is my encouragement for all of you guys. Think about where you guys started to where you are today. But God, have you ever had an idea of what you wanted to be? And it didn't happen right then and there, or it might not happen completely. But then you reflect back like, wow, I'm glad that didn't happen. But God, I have numerous times. I wanted to be a music video director. Yes, in 2012, 2013, I felt like a failure because I wasn't working with superstar artists. I was still quote unquote local, but God, now I work with local business owners and I love it. I wouldn't trade it for the world, but God, I felt like a failure then, but look at me now, but God, I was also the one who used to rely on a bottle 
So many during my late teen years, my 20s, I used to be so dependent on alcohol and I developed alcoholism. God convicted me literally over 500 days as recording this. This was on Thursday. I celebrated 500 days of being sober, alcohol free. But God, I was convicted 4 18 22, day after my birthday in 2022. I started reading the Word of God and I got convicted to be sober minded. But God, and I, it's those reflections that I have often, even down to where my family used to live. I, I, I breezed past there the other day and I saw the townhouse we had in England run as our start off, just getting to know. I didn't even have my baby daughter at the time, Carter, who was about to be seven this month. He wasn't even born. I was being a stepdad before a real dad. And me and my wife now, we're learning how to live with each other, learning about each other. But God, now we're here, continuing to grow. And that's my message. I just want to say that God's plan is always better than ours. I, I say that often. I read it in a book at T.D. Jakes. He said that sometimes we might question God, like, why God, why us? When really, we should be shifting that mind of why not us? Why not me? When we think about what God sacrificed his own son, Jesus, for us today, every disciple in the Bible was felt with trial and tribulation, with a test, Moses, Elijah, Daniel in the lion's den. Why not us? It's almost like when a parent speaks to their child, hey, clean up your room. They might ask why. We feel like we don't have to tell them why. We don't have to tell them that we have company coming over right now, spur of the moment. We don't have to explain that. They should just know and have discernment, the key word discernment right there. And the same goes for us. Sometimes when God's plan, God's up here elevated. We're right. We're, our intellectual only goes to a certain amount. I know mine only stays of what I can see. We can't see the bigger blueprint of what God can. He's the mastermind of it all. So what does it look like God coming down when we're questioning, oh, I'm doing this for this and this and this and going back up? We have to catch up high to him, right? Why not us? And my story of what's been going on for the past month, I've realized in my 34 years of learning and living, I should say, I'm still on a constant lifelong journey, but I realized my plans, my journey, and when I thought I could control everything, that's a pure joke. I don't control nothing, nothing at all, but God, God does. And me letting go and me put all my faith in him, I have been more peaceful on this. I have been more moldable like clay. I have been more open. My faith has been keeping me at peace. And I know if you guys know, and if you don't know, I was going through it for a few weeks. I was being tested, but I didn't ask for the test to stop. I prayed. I prayed to God to give me the strength, to give me the endurance, to give me the discipline, to give me the lesson I know. And I got the lesson, and I'm speaking about the lesson right now. And I hope this can inspire someone out there because it gets real out here. And it will continue to be real, but we got to realize that we are not being cut. We are not being punished. We are being pruned because I repotted some plants the other day and I had to prune some of them so they can continue to grow better and grow bigger. That's what God is doing to each and every one of us right now. I'm just a messenger. This is the gospel as written by me as it unfolds right now you guys remember we're all like sticks of dynamite the power's on the inside but nothing happens until the fuse gets lit ignite the world